Hey guys, CJ here, PBX How To's. We're going to talk today another basic video on coverage paths. Coverage paths are paths of endpoints that can be called if a primary uh, device does not answer the phone. So think of it like rolling to voicemail at your home. So uh, if someone calls your house and you have an answer machine, um, your house is going to ring three or four times and then hit your hit your answer machine. That is a coverage path. Um, so, but let me show you how they work in terms of the Avaya PBXs. And this translates to all the different PBXs because coverage paths or coverage paths are coverage paths. So, I'm going to list cover path. And you can see I don't have any in the system. You can apply coverage paths to many things. Like, for instance, display station 1000, which I just did. I can have multiple coverage paths in here. And I'll actually talk about this in my more intermediate videos on the second coverage path in a station but you can see stations can have coverage paths display hunt 13 uh, hunt groups can have coverage paths so it allows you to do something with it if if no one answers uh, that primary termination device or endpoint make sense all right so let's get to it we're going to add cover path i can do next or I can specify a number and obviously because 13 is a great number we're gonna pick 13 now coverage paths have to be used you know based on what you're doing in your in your system or at your in your environment because you can you can see a problem right away with coverage paths is that you can have a lot of points of termination you can also go to another coverage path if all of these points have been exhausted meaning they've all called them and no one's heard that's a lot of phone that's a lot of rings that the caller's going to hear in their ear. Okay? So use these be smart about where you put these and and how you apply them cuz they're all going to have impacts based on your caller's experience and that's really what it comes down to is caller experience. We're all technical, we can all program these things like like no other, but just remember the end user, remember the caller cuz that's how I everything I do in these systems is how fast do I want to get that caller to the information they need, whether it's talking to an IVR or listening to an IVR or talking to a representative. All right, so just keep that in mind. Let's go on. All right, next path number. This part allows you to send it to an additional coverage path after all these options down here have been exhausted, as, as they say. But basically, everything in these points have been called. So I don't use that unless, again, special circumstances. Let's talk about the coverage criteria. The coverage criteria is a powerful place for you to set how and when your coverage path should be uh, processed. All right, so let's talk about act active calls is redirected if at least one call appearance is busy. All right, so inside and outside. So you have two options. You have inside calls, which is extension to extension, and outside calls, which comes in from the outside PSTN, your trunks to the stations. That's what the outside call is going to process. I have no here because, and you usually want no, all right? Again, unless under special circumstances. Uh, real quick, you if you leave this default, that's probably a good idea. The only thing you want to change is the number of rings. You might want to up that to three or four because it won't give someone time to answer the phone if they're at the water cooler or if they're on another line and they want to put them on hold to answer, which goes into this act part. If I'm active on a call, I want to be able to see that call come in and have the chance to answer it. But if I don't, again, if I have a special situation where I don't, I would set this to yes. So if I'm on a phone call, it's a go to cover if I'm on the phone. All right, that's what active means. Busy. As you can see, this one's ticked as yes. See? Yes, yes. And busy says calls redirect if all call appearances that accept in incoming calls are busy. So if your phone is busy, it's going to fall through that. All right, so don't answer. This is if you don't answer the phone. It's going to ring this many times. I'm going to say three. Uh, if you don't answer the phone, this many rings, that's where it's going to go. All right, all. All says send to coverage path every single time. So let's say you have some phones for users that aren't are no longer there, but you need to have those phones available because someone else has access to the mailboxes, but those phone numbers are public. Well, you could set this to yes, and you won't have a bunch of phones ringing. It'll go right to voicemail every single time. There's other ways to handle this, but it gives you the option to do that. And do not do not disturb. Send all calls. Go to cover. 
basically your sack, as I like to call it, your sack button or your DND buttons. Someone sets their phone using a feature access code or the DND button on their phone uh, to say go to cover. This is where this process is. So even if they set it, it won't allow it if this is set to no. All right. But again, leaving these defaults, you're pretty safe in handling coverage pass. Number of rings, three. And uh, terminate to coverage points uh, with bridged appearances. You can do that based on if the phone has a bridged appearance on their phone, which we'll talk about bridged appearances in another basic video. But uh, again, leave it to no unless you can have a special circumstance that you need that to happen. So point one, let's say I'm going to set my station of 1013 uh, that if I don't answer it after three rings, actually for this exercise, we're going to change it to two. So it's a little bit faster. So you don't have to hear the ringing. Uh, and then I'm going to send the call to 1000. And I can choose how many rings I want it to ring at that point. So we're going to say two. Actually, I'm going to say one. Let's see what happens. Why not? And then I'm going to say one zero two zero one ring. And then I'm going to put hunt group 13. And I'm going to say, I'm just going to leave that blank, leave it default. All right, so when someone calls 1013, it's going to ring to coverage point 1000. It's going to ring that one once. Then it's going to ring it to 1020 once. And then it's going to ring to hunt 13. Now, hunt 13 in my case right now is my uh, tech support group. So it's going to ring out to them. And if I wanted, if no one answers there, I could send it to an additional hunt group that handles my voicemail. All right. But I'll show you that in a, in a voicemail video that talks about how to set up your coverage path for people to call or, or when you're calling users to get to voicemail after so many rings. All right. So I could say hunt 99 or whatever you set it up to. Okay. You can also do uh, announcements. You can play an announcement before it goes there. You could say point one is the announcement of you know whatever announcement I have set up that says please hold let me try to find someone okay so it's like a find me little, little pseudo find me if you will so you can play announcements you can also set it to go to a VDN let's say this is a this is an agent or a uh, tech support person who's part of a call center well you could set it to that VDN if he doesn't answer so someone else in that group can answer the call all right you can set it to the hunt groups like I showed you you can also set it to another coverage path you can also set it to remote or you can send it to the attendant, which is the operator. Uh, remote coverage points are like cell phones. So you could put a remote four in here and let's say remote four goes to my cell phone. I could say if someone calls my desk, it could ring through the coverage pass and then get to my cell phone if I choose for that to be. Um, but EC500 you can set up is a little bit easier to deal with, but you have the option here in coverage points. All right, pretty simple. I'm gonna submit this. And actually, I'm going to change this a bit because I need to use the phone I'm talking on. So we're going to say uh, 1,000. We're going to say 1020, and we're going to say ring one. I'm going to say hunt 13, ring one. I'm going to blank that out just so I can show you the example. Okay, I'm going to submit that, and now I need to go into my station uh, 1,000, and I need to set my coverage path right here as 13, and submit it. Display cover path 13. That way, when I call 1000 from my station at 1013, it's going to ring to 1020, and then it's going to ring to the hunt group. So let me show you how this how this works. Let's trace station 1013. We're going to go off hook. I'm going to say 1000. Phone's ringing. Rings once. Oh, I'm sorry. Twice because I have the first coverage point. There's the cover. It actually says cover on my phone. Now it's ringing the analog phone, as you can hear. No cover. Okay. Then it's going to ring to the hunk group, and that's where it's going right now. All right. That is it. I'm going to hang up. And you can see in the trace, uh, this is all VoIP stuff in here. Again, we'll talk about VoIP in other videos. But you can see here, coverage point 13.2. There was no answer, so go to hunt group 13. And there you go. So you can see through these pages, list, trace, previous. <clears throat> you can see ring station right here. No one answered. Go to coverage point, point one. 
No one answered. No one answered at that one, so go to the next point, which is hunt group 13. And there you go. So you can see the life cycle of this call through this cover path. All right, pretty easy, pretty easy stuff. So if you guys have any questions, comments on this one, let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have on coverage pass. Again, I'll do some more intermediate stuff when we start doing the voicemail portions of it, and I'll be able to help you out. So I do appreciate you guys watching, and keep watching for more videos that I post up, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.